We're joined now by the CEO of ABN AMRO, Robert Swack. Robert, thanks so much for your time this morning. Uh, let, let me ask um, how, how, what shape you expect dividend policy to take because, you know, when this all started up and um, regulators were asking banks to hold back, it seemed like something that would only um, be necessary for one year. Now we're into the second calendar year of this. What are dividends going to look like? Yeah, it's, I think it's going to be, uh, frankly, a, a mixed bag. I think it was clearly understood why the ECB came up with dividend policy the way it did at the beginning and the outset of the crisis. I think, in all fairness, uh, no one would have expected at the time when this started uh, for this crisis pandemic uh, to continue the way it has. So the caution that's been put into a dividend ban, I think, at the time is understandable. I think now you're seeing a mixed bag. Uh, in terms of re reactions, um, certainly the ECB is now allowed for a certain uh, level of dividend uh, to be distributed as long as it's proven and it's, uh, it's sustainable. Uh, so I think you're going to see uh, probably a, a, a you know, varied uh, reactions uh, across the board, although, although generally I would expect still you know, a, a conservative um, attitude toward distribution. But again, the, the ECB has allowed for some. OK, uh, Robert, good morning. So conservative about distribution, and this, I suppose, is one of the ways that banks have tried to cast themselves as part of the solution to COVID-19 rather than the problem, as we saw back with the financial crisis. What more do you think the banking sector can try to do to try and rebuild economies, to try and accelerate our recovery in 2021? Yeah, I think, it, I think it's been a... Um, cert certainly at the outset, and it actually continues to be a... Um, an, an excellent initiative, uh, both from government measures, combination of government measures and banking measures. So you've seen uh, the, um, the, uh, the the various measures that banks have taken in allowing facilities for customers to be um, to, to extend their their payments, um, to be close to the customers in these times, and to realize that uh, what customers are actually going through in times of crisis. So. Extending measures uh, in terms of um, continued uh, review of uh, customer credit worthiness, work with customers um, as they work their way through the, the crisis. I think the combination of measures that have been taken have actually worked us through the crisis uh, to, to, to an extent. Now, there's going to be a, a, a clear indication as we, as we begin to, to get a, to a different phase of the crisis that not all sectors um, have, are coming through this well. I think that's a, that's a very obvious statement. And that means that we also have to work very closely in those sectors with affected uh, clients to make sure they continue to navigate well. I wonder what about uh, what you're doing about workers who have you know, stuck with it, um, continued working hard, even from home, in some cases, uh, making the bank more money and concerned about their bonuses. Are, are you considering cutting back your bonus pool? Is that necessary here? What factors weigh in that decision? Well, we continue to be very, very close to all of our workers uh, during this time um, to make sure that they can indeed work from home. Uh, that they get the required facilities in order to be effective uh, from home. Um, and we all have to take into consideration uh, performances across the board. That's not just in terms of bonuses that you pay, uh, but, uh, but just to make sure that can people indeed work from home. So ultimately, we'll have to take an overall view, and then uh, you know we'll determine what's next. But I think primarily uh, right now, the main concern is for all of our workers um, to be safe, and to be able to to be able to do their work from home uh, and to facilitate them doing so. Uh, can I ask you about something that's sort of running in the background for ABN AMRO and has been for a little while? It's been reported that your business is finally nearing a settlement in a fairly long-running investigation that regards suspicious transactions. Uh, are you prepared for any outcome? Can you update us as to as to where you've got to on this? Um, yeah, I, I can't really comment on any ongoing investigation, so um, I won't comment on an ongoing investigation. Uh, what I can say is that we continue to cooperate uh, fully uh, with the authorities.
Can you tell us, uh, can you maybe update us on the possibility of bolt-on acquisitions? You said back in November the bank said um, bolt-on acquisitions were a possibility. Can you get more specific about what type of assets you would look at? Yeah, I think we've been uh, very clear in our uh, strategy update where we've made a, a very clear choice around segments that we intend to uh, focus on, that we intend to invest on, and that we intend to, albeit modestly, grow. Uh, private banking has been uh, an important sector for, for ABN AMRO, an important part of ABN AMRO. Uh, we have market-leading positions in there, and so we did announce that we, we would be looking uh, for both on acquisitions, and private banking uh, would be part of it. Can I ask you about the low interest rate environment, Robert? We talked just a moment ago to Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, and in terms of thematic investing, they are looking at a five to ten year period where we have fairly low interest rates. I wonder where that leaves banks such as such as such as yours, where that leaves European banking in general when we sit here with negative interest rates in some economies. How difficult does that make it for your industry? Yeah, what it forces the industry to do, and what it certainly is what we at ABN AMRO have been doing over the last year or so, is be very, very specific about the segments that you are strong in, segments that you can sustain performance, segments that you can identify, albeit modest growth. Um, and it's also be very conscious of uh, where is the pressure on NII and how does that potentially transfer into the fee part of the, uh, of the, uh, the profit and loss. So by concentrating on the, the areas that you know that you can you can uh, grow, um, by also being continuing to be very conscious on cost structures and then utilizing the digitization that we've seen over these last couple of months, which is really accelerated. Um, there's a lot that you can actually do in terms of customer satisfaction. We've seen our NPS go up through video banking. And, and at the same time, uh, we also know that it offers uh, quite a bit of opportunity uh, to serve our customers different in a much more personal manner. And I think these are all measures to offset the, the NII pressure that we're going to feel for quite some time. So there are uh, headwinds and tailwinds then resulting uh, from, let's say, the last year, not necessarily the pandemic, but the restructuring that you've put in place is pretty far-reaching, and I wonder... Um, you know, how the crisis, including things like the low interest rate and, the, uh, and, and stimulus, is affecting your ability to, to execute that plan, Robert? Yeah, I think the, uh, the restructuring, or at least the 15% the, um, the, the reduction that we talked about, it's an ongoing trend in the market. So that's nothing new. That, that, that continues and it will continue. And certainly we've, we've given a, uh, a time frame of about four years uh, starting, uh, starting next year. Um, so we do think that the further digitization that you're seeing is allowing for a much more effective way of serving our customers. So what that actually means is that you, um, you, you redesign the way you engage with your customers. And ultimately, those are all measures that you then need to take. And the benefits thereof is a different way of serving our customers. So the combination of focus the combination of choice on geographical areas that you that you then subsequent, uh, subsequent, subsequently execute uh, in, and the fact that you are uh, adjusting much more to a digital bank, allowing to be both yourself to be in, in ABN Amherst's case to be a convenience bank and an expertise bank at the same time, is actually going right to what I've just talked about: the focus of the client segments that you need to be in. You need to be laser sharp on uh, the market segments that you can serve.